change your inner dialogue to I can and I am. I can get through this. I am getting through this. And behind the wheel and in the mirror and when you're writing it down, this is what you need to say. Hey everyone and welcome to today's video. Thank you for joining me. I'm Val Mason. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about emotional triggers and the subconscious patterns that keep resurfacing and repeating in our lives and manifesting in our physical reality through relationships and situations and really what to do and how to handle them. Um, so with that being said, without further ado, maybe before we get into how we choose to respond and how we handle these patterns and situations, what I suggest, and I do this all the time, is to write down and speak out loud and get in front of the mirror and speak out loud and verbalize what it is that you fear, what it is that you fear the most. And this is funny because when you start doing this practice, you'll start realizing what you actually do fear and you'll start understanding yourself better. And then you get the upper hand. You know, you're bringing that shadow to the light. You're shining light on that shadow. So, and the more honest that you can be in this practice and the more present you can be with that and allowing yourself to feel that emotion, the more you're going to heal and the better off you're going to be. It's really, truly doing a service for yourself. So, and I do it all. I speak in the mirror. I write down. I verbalized, actually, in fact, just last night, I was driving and my body was just so, just tense, you know, and full of tension and because I'm experiencing things um, and it's causing me fear. So I verbalized what it was. Now, let me say that before we actually can get to the point where we verbalize because we're so locked up and we're so tight that it feels like we can't even move, we can't function, you know, this is what depression does, you know, uh, anxiety and fear locks you up. It becomes very hard to function and do everyday activities, but this is what we're here to, to learn how to do, to be able to function and to be able to know how to release and move through these waves of fear and grief and, and negativity as we have the opportunities to heal them. So anyway, I was driving last night and I said out loud what it was. Like I finally mustered up the, the strength to actually verbalize it and say it out loud. And it was amazing. The weight that just lifted off of me instantly after doing that. And I'm like, man, this is great. I got to talk about this. So highly recommend to, if you're, if this sounds awkward to you, and if, if me saying this is awakening fear in you because you don't know if you're able to actually do that with yourself, you don't know if you can actually face yourself like that, rest assured that you can. There's nothing that you cannot do. It takes incremental steps. You know, we have to go through B and C before we can get from A to D. We can't jump over. So we have to incrementally, in a lot of cases, work our way and build our way up um, to what it is that we want to achieve or, you know, a goal. Just work at it, you know, just work at it. And once you get through that barrier, you're like, oh, wow, cool. I'm free now. So it's just, this, it's that concept. Just keep working at it and keep chipping away at it. So the more honest that you can be in writing down what you absolutely fear the most. This is a challenging practice. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it's not challenging because we all have deep, deep fears that like we fear for our lives, um, whatever it may be. So the more that we can actually face, because fear will try to trick you every step of the way. Every step of the way, fear will try to trick you and say, you're unworthy. It's not going to happen. You're not good enough. Da -da 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 da 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 The whole way. So that's why remaining consciously aware of that little voice of fear 
is so important. We have to, our consciousness, we have to choose love. You know, love always wins. Shine the light on fear and it has no more control. Avoid it, distract yourself, so on and so forth. It stays in the darkness and continues to control you behind the scenes without you even consciously realizing it. It controls your thought process. It controls the um, how your body chemically reacts to thoughts. It controls your thoughts. So the more conscious that we can become with what it is that we fear, the better. So with that being said, I wanted to get that out of the way first. Um, now these emotional triggers that uh, we experience now, they, th th this subconscious programming of like bottomless pit and doom and fear and all the negativity that is being awakened currently on the planet, you know, we're experiencing, it can be, it can overtake you. I mean, it can really sweep you away. If that's why I mentioned that practice first and foremost, because the more that you practice, the more you're programming and wiring your brain to have that foot through the door every time you get triggered, every time one of the subconscious programs that you've been programmed with in your soul blueprint since childhood, every time it comes up, you now know, okay, you know, and then you, you know, you tell yourself and you work your way through it and you, you allow that process to unfold, but you stay in the lead. Even if it takes you, it takes you because it's going to be overtaking. It'll take you, you take the lead back. It'll take your reins, you take your reins back. You know, it's it's a dance, so on and so forth. Um, and so with that practice, I want to go ahead and add that your inner dialogue is everything. If you are saying to yourself, I'm not worthy, I can't do this, I can't handle this, I'm not cut out for this, this is too much for me. And it's, I'm not saying that that's wrong or bad because we all have that, you know, we all experience that feeling. We're just being honest with how we feel, right? But however, you know, what you're saying is literally creating your future, it's everything. So instead flip the script and say, well, I'm unsure if I really am, if you are unsure, you know, it's good to be, this is how you train yourself to be certain and to know that you're cut out and to know that you're made for your challenges. If you're experiencing it, you're made for it, period. So, but to change your inner dialogue to I can and I am, I can get through this. I am getting through this and behind the wheel and in the mirror. And when you're writing it down, this is what you need to say along with writing your fears, do it by contrast, write your fear out. And then next to it, draw a line that's separate. And then next to it, say, I can do this. I am doing this. I am in control of how I respond. I am centered and balanced. I do have heart brain coherence. I am grateful for the guidance that enters my life in divine timing in the perfect way through the perfect people. And be, be in that dialogue. Don't say it and then be some, be standing in the back somewhere looking at it, wear it, you know, wear it, embody it, feel it. And that might be a practice as well. Uh, getting into that embodiment of what it is that you're decreeing and affirming. But affirmations that are positive, that you believe in yourself are, are game changers. A hundred percent. The universe is listening to you. Uh, you know, when you're in that, I am, everything starts shifting and rearranging and will begin to reflect that. That doesn't mean that the clouds are going to part and the sun's going to come out never to go away again. What it means is that you're saying, I am cut out for the challenges before me. And I am understanding that I receive guidance and teaching and lesson from my challenges. So the goal isn't to sweep away and rush away all of our challenges and the things that we want to avoid and that we find make us uncomfortable or, you know, 
stir up our lives and all this sort of thing because um the obstacle is the path it's really about accepting your path and accepting um what you your life has been given and accepting your destiny because the more that you wish and want it to be something else the more resistance you're going to create in every area of your life and it's hard it's challenging it takes immense inner strength to surrender to what is and say this is my task this is my blueprint this is my path this is my lesson this is my mission because it, it'll bend you you know it'll bend you until you are uh, submissive to the higher wisdom plan but by that point you're filled with love you know once you are in alignment with that you're working in service of love so that is that and then we get to um how we choose to respond and it all goes hand in hand with what i've been saying um we want to respond in alignment with what it is that we want to experience you know it, we want to respond with who it is that we actually want to be and desire to be in this life you know if you don't know right it's a good idea to, to look around and figure out what it is that you actually truly want let me tell you especially here in western civilization we are so brainwashed and blinded by everyday life here and in, in the culture of western civilization it, just going to work just everyday life going to work doing this doing that you know and we're so consumed by the physical reality in the third dimension we are brainwashed and disconnected from the magic of the unseen symbolic and energetic forces that that this reality is created of we're out of touch and and out of tune with the magic of everyday life and our power and our light you know because we're we're burdened with all this other stuff we're, our light's not shining through. We're not in connection with our heart. We don't have heart brain coherence. If you're living in Western civilization, if you're healing trauma, now if you have a family, if you have, you know, problems here and this and that, you know, we have to handle our, our affairs. That's part of why I'm making this video to remind you to take some time out of your day to cultivate this mindfulness and the awareness to reconnect with the magic of who you are. You know, your light of who you are and the magic of every day, all things, you know. I don't, I can't tell you how long I've pondered just, just how much, and myself included, we are so disconnected from the deep magic of energetic symbolism and um, archetypes. So I do well to watch as many people that you know are immersed in the magic of life and live by the magic i watch them as much as possible uh, it's great reminders and it, it keeps me in tune as well keep in touch with that so that you can keep a kind of goal you know what are we working towards what is it that you truly want um because it's just so easy to be blown around. It's just so easy to be taken by lower frequency belief systems without being in alignment with, you know, love and unity and supporting one another and, and wanting each other to grow and succeed and win. And, you know, being there for like, you know, supporting life, life supporting life. I know that sounds unrealistic. If you're operating in a lower paradigm, it sounds unrealistic, but I'm going to tell you that it's us that need to choose love in when the lower paradigm is playing out 
in the most appropriate way in that situation and moment that we can to choose love and um, to choose positivity and light and the direction that we want to go in. And when you know who it is that you're aiming to be and you, you, know, you know what your mission is and you know what you value and what you prioritize, that makes it that much easier for you to have control in how you respond with your heart and your brain in alignment, in coherence, that you ground yourself and you center yourself in the moment and you're confident in what you are choosing to do when everyone else around you is going to do something different. They're going to call you crazy. They're going to say it sounds unrealistic. They're going to look at you like you're corny maybe or like you're weird, you know? It doesn't matter. This is what we're here to do. And you'll never be able to plant a seed in another person's mind. You'll never be able to change the world if you don't stick to your guns and do what your heart is guiding you to do, regardless of what anyone else is doing. That's sexy. I love seeing that. I love when I see somebody doing what they want to do and what their heart's telling them to do and loving when everyone else around them is, is opposed to it or doesn't understand it or is mocking them, so on and so forth. I love that. And now, uh, the last part of this video is that it is precisely what we're saying to ourselves. So our inner dialogue, how we are responding, no matter how difficult it is in that moment, no matter how overtaking it is, we have to be in that moment. We don't know what to do. We don't know how we, we're cornered. The only thing left to do is to break wide open because uh, you know, there's nothing left to do but just to surrender, break open, and let that light through. Let it come out. You know. It's very hard to surrender. But that's what changes our psyche. It's what changes our inner landscape. And it rearranges and lets old energy go that is out of alignment, that's holding you back, that's keeping you sick. And it allows everything to kind of come back together and reorganize with your heart and your brain in, co in alignment. And so it is that choice that you make to surrender without sticking to the old ways of what you've always done. Whether it's drinking or drugging or going off, you know, or being violent or anything that just continues to happen over and over without any progression or evolution. When you finally choose to do something different and surrender your pain. That's the game changer. That choice right there has now changed your future. So it's the choices that we're making in those moments. It is our inner dialogue. It's our subconscious belief system. All of it that be, um, that is either perpetuating our karma or it's creating new karma. So whatever we're doing is creating karma. We're either perpetuating the old or we're creating new. And it's creating your future. So everything that we do, how we live by, what we're saying to ourselves is creating our future and it's creating our karma through quantum entanglement. Um, and so one more last note that I want to leave uh, before we end today's video is that you can't adopt a practice or a belief that you feel is morally right or correct without it coming from you authentically. Each person's task is kind of figuring out who it is, that, who are you, what's your core energetic frequency, what's your signature uh, frequency and your soul energy? What is your unique style and how you want to live and how you want to love and how you want to give your message? Because there's no right or wrong way, you know? What feels the best and what comes from you authentically? That's what's going to make it um, the most impactful. And that's what's going to move people and not woo them. So that's something you might want to keep in mind when you're thinking about everything, you know, because when, when we're learning about all of this, 
we kind of we're watching other people and we're looking around and you know we, we kind of naturally adopt styles of modalities uh, when really we are an individual for a reason and we have our own way of of how we do things so that's it for today I hope this video was helpful thank you for joining me uh, if you did enjoy the video or if it was helpful please leave a like and also leave a comment don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't already until next time thank you